Good morning. Welcome to the worship service of the Huntsville Church of Christ. We're glad everyone is here as everyone continues to make their way in. We're going to start our worship this morning with a song of praise to God. Let's stand as we sing this together. Let's stand as we sing this, thing, this song together, please. We praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, Thine the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, Thine the glory, revive us again. We praise Thee, O God, for Thy Spirit of light, who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, Thine the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, Thine the glory, revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again, fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Be seated, please. Listen as I read this scripture, if you will, to kind of follow up from that song. This is the Apostle John describing his view of heaven. And in Revelation, the fifth chapter, he says, Then I looked. And I heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. And in a loud voice, they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth, wisdom and strength, and honor and glory and praise. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them singing to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor, glory and power forever and forever. There weren't, in this scripture, there were 10,000 times 10,000 singing praise to God. There were just now not that many, but those of you who were singing all praise to the lamb that was slain, the same one that is here. If you didn't sing that song, you're going to have opportunity to join with us and sing the rest of the hymns. But I do want to encourage everyone that's here. I want to tell you, if you're a visitor, we're glad you're here. There are some people that are here for the first time. We want to welcome you. We want you to join in uh, with us in active participation in the worship, and those of our members as well. And so... Um, we're glad you're here. We want you to join in uh, with the worship, and we want you to be blessed for having been here. Even if you don't feel like you're blessed, we want you to bless the Lord with your voice, with your hearts this morning. So thank you for coming, and please join us as we continue our worship. We'll be singing this song through twice. He is able, more than able, to accomplish what concerns me today. He is able, more than able, to handle anything that comes. 
comes my way. He is able, more than able, to do much more than I could ever dream. He is able, more than able, to make me what he wants me to be. He is able, more than able, to accomplish what concerns me today. He is able, more than able, to handle anything that comes my way. He is able, more than able, to do much more than I could ever dream. He is able, more than able, to make me what he wants me to be. I am a sheep, and the Lord is my shepherd, watching over my soul. My soul to keep guarding over me ever, watching wherever I go. And when the winds blow, he is my shepherd. And when I'm lost and alone, he rescues me. And when the lion comes, he is my victory, constantly watching over me. He is constantly watching over me. We are his children, and he is our Father, watching over our souls. Great is his love for his sons and his daughters, watching wherever we go. And when the winds blow, he is our shepherd, and when I'm lost and alone, he rescues me, and when the lion comes, he is my victory, constantly watching over me. He is constantly watching over me. Good morning. No, good morning. Yes, yes. Let's never take for granted what Jesus, the sacrifice that he did for us. Never, ever take that for granted. It's always a good morning. Um, before I pray, I just want to mention and ask your help. Uh, a friend of mine, he's 11 years old. His name is Mason Canterbury. He's autistic. When he was four, he got his shots. He talked like a normal person then, but since then all he does is hit himself. He doesn't speak. It's just, we've watched him grow up, praying for him. The only thing he would ever eat was catfish, I mean those little goldfish. And I begin to pray that God would help him, and he's now eating french fries and donut holes. <laughs> but uh, I was at the DMV, or excuse me, the discount tire place, and the lady was telling me about her son had the same problem, and they put him on this medicine, and two months later, he began to speak, and to this day, he is normal. And this week, my friend's taking her son to get that medicine. So I ask all of y'all to pray that God would empower that drug to help poor Mason to have a normal life that we take for granted. So please, will you do that? For her. Let's go to our Father and praise Him in prayer. 
Holy are you, Lord God Almighty. We're just so thankful, Father. I don't ever want to take the sacrifice of your son for granted. Lord, I know I'm the least. I just want to praise you every moment. Thank you so much for the rain we got last night. Pray the damage was minimal for others. Lord, we know you're in control. You cause the world to spin the same exact speed every day. And whether the people in Russia want to kill people or other people in this world want to do harm or we just want to love, we want them to love and we ask your blessings upon them and their hearts. Lord, we pray that we take your gospel throughout this whole world and that we're not ashamed or afraid and that we never cow down, Father. And Lord, again, just ask your blessings on poor Mason and his mother. And I thank you for every blessing that I have. In Christ's name, amen. Worthy of praise is Christ our Redeemer. Worthy of glory, honor, and power. Worthy of all our soul's adoration. Worthy art thou, worthy art thou, worthy of riches, blessings, and honor, worthy of wisdom, glory, and power, worthy of earth and heaven's thanksgiving, worthy art thou, worthy art thou. Lift up the voice in praise and devotion. Things of all earth before him should bow. Angels in heaven worship him, saying, Worthy art thou, worthy art thou. Worthy of riches, blessings, and honor. Worthy of wisdom, glory, and power. Worthy of earth and heaven's thanksgiving. Worthy art thou, worthy art thou. Lord, may we come before thee with singing. Filled with thy spirit, wisdom, and power. May we ascribe thee glory and honor. Worthy art thou, worthy art thou. Worthy of riches, blessings, and honor. Worthy of wisdom, glory, and power. Worthy of earth and heaven's thanksgiving. Worthy art thou, worthy art thou. <clears throat> My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong by the Savior's love. 
through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong by the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. Before we share in the Lord's Supper together, we'll sing the three verses of the song which ask and answer a very important question. Let's sing together. Why did my Savior come to earth and to the humble go? Why did he choose a lowly birth? Because he loved me so. He loved me so. He loved me so. He gave his precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Why did he drink the bitter cup of sorrow, pain, and woe? Why on the cross be lifted up? Because he loved me so. He loved me so. He loved me so. He gave his precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Till Jesus comes, I'll sing his praise, and then to glory go, and reign with him through endless days, because he loved me so. He loved me so. He loved me so. He gave his precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. God sent his son, Jesus, to this earth. He was born here. He lived a perfect life. He was arrested. He was crucified, hung on a cross, and died. And then he was buried in a tomb, and he rose again. And he did all of that for each one of us here so that we could uh, have eternal life with him one day. Luke chapter 24 says, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared for him uh, and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. 
But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified on the third day, uh, be crucified and on the third day raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all of these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told uh, this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed like nonsense. Peter, however, got up, ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen laying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. So many times we forget that he did that for us, or we hear people in the world say that this story sounds like nonsense. And it is almost nonsense that he would do that for us. But because of that, we come here on the first day of the week every week, and we remember that that he did for us. So as we take this bread, we will remember his body that he sacrificed for us. And as we take the the fruit of the vine, we will remember his blood that was shed for us. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your sacrifice. We ask you to forgive us when we forget what you've done for us, and when we live lives that we shouldn't, but we thank you that you sent Jesus to this earth to to die for us. Forgive us of our sins, and let us remember this, uh, his body, as we take this bread. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us bow again. God, we come before you again. As we take this cup, let us remember Jesus' blood that was shed. We thank you for his willingness and for his sacrifice for us. And uh, we thank you for that. And it's in his name we pray. Amen.
now have the opportunity to give back to God's work and uh, thank him for the ways that he's blessed us. Um, we will pass it around the collection plate to help uh, this church uh, fund the things that it does to further the kingdom. Um, you can also go online to the website uh, on the screen and, and you can give there as well. So let us bow our heads as we thank God for how he's blessed us. God, we thank you for giving us more than we need, for providing for us, for uh, just taking care of us in so many ways. We thank you for this church, and I pray that as we collect these funds that uh, the money will be uh, used where you want it to be used. Uh, bless those that make the decisions uh, of where it will be used, and, and just thank you for... Uh, taking care of us and providing for us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We take this time to let our younger children go to Children's Church. So if you'd like to accompany them, they will be taught a lesson and sing some songs and have a good time. And uh, we really appreciate those people who lead that class. And while they're doing that, let's sing this next song about faithful love. Faithful love flowing down from the thorn-covered crown Makes me whole, saves my soul, washes whiter than snow Faithful love calms each fear, reaches down, dries each tear Holds my hand when I can't Stand on my own, faithful love from above came to earth to show the Father's love, and I'll never be the same for I've seen. And Jesus is his name. Faithful love is a friend just when hope aims to end. Welcome face, sweet embrace, tender touch filled with grace. Faithful love, endless power, loving flame, spirit's fire, burning bright in the night, guiding my way. Faithful love from above came to earth to show the fall love and I'll never be a shame for I've seen faithful love face to face and Jesus is his name for I've seen faithful love face to face and Jesus is his name. If you can.
can. I'd like everybody to sing as we sing this next song, please. Stand, that's what I meant to say. And sing. Here we go. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. After I'd wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend, he met the need of my heart. Sure as dispelling with joy, I am telling, he made all the darkness depart. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Born of the Spirit with life from above, into God's family divine. Justified fully through Calvary's love, oh, what a standing is mine. And such action so quickly was made, when as a sinner I came. Took the offer of grace, he did proffer, he saved me, oh, praise his dear name. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Now of a hope that will surely endure after the passing of time. I have a future in heaven for sure, there in those mansions sublime. And it's because of that wonderful day when at the cross I believed. Riches eternal and blessings eternal from his precious hand I received. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Amen. Be seated, please. Well, good morning. It is uh, it's a great day to be here. We're glad you're here this morning. I know that there's a, a lot of places you can be, and we're glad that you choose to be with us. Um, there's a lot of things going on this uh, this month, as as it is for everybody. It's summertime, and so uh, things are supposed to slow down, but I don't know about your family. They don't slow down in my house. Um, there's, there's all kind of stuff going on here as well. A um, few things I want to tell you about before we jump in this morning. Um, tonight is our first S&T, that's Sunday night together. Um, we're, we're doing S&Ts this summer, um, and we're calling it Wisdom in the Spotlight. We're going to look at the wisdom books, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs. And each week we'll have a different question. Um, and, and the question this week is, why do bad things happen to good people? And that's going to come out of the book of Job. And so that's going to be the discussion. I have to go to a, a, a mission trip meeting, so Todd's going to facilitate this week. I left him the easy one. Um, and so uh, he's not happy with me, I'm sure. But that's okay. I know he can handle it. Todd's going to facilitate that. So be here at 530 tonight. That is our first S&T 
of the season, and uh, you definitely want to be here for that. Um, now, next Sunday, I want you to know that uh, the, the group from the Impact Church of Christ in, in Houston, they are going to be here, and uh, they're going to uh, uh, do the worship and the preaching and uh, um, tell us a little bit about uh, what goes on down there in, uh, in that particular church. And so you definitely want to be here and be part of that. That is next Sunday, the 18th. And uh, so that will be a, a, a great opportunity for you to be a part of. We won't have an s &T that night because it's Father's Day. We're enc encouraging you to uh, call your daddy or spend time with, uh, with somebody that is, that is a father figure in your life. Um, and then the 25th, um, when we will be on the mission trip, um, Sloan Curtis is going to be uh, preaching for us. Sloan, stand up. And, and I don't know if you remember Sloan. Sloan was a part of the, yeah. Sloan was a part of the KFC, and uh, then he went on uh, to uh, complete training at, at the Sunset uh, Bible Institute, and so uh, uh, he has uh, been a part of this congregation for a long time, and so I know you're looking forward to that. That will be uh, the 25th, and then the s &T that night will be a singing night, and um, that's, uh, there's a lot of people have requested that, and so uh, we're just going to get together and sing. If you have songs you want to sing, maybe that you haven't heard in a while, or maybe new songs we want to learn, um, our uh, dynamic trio of Gary, Gary, and Carrie are going to run that. I just love saying that, so you're going to hear it a lot. Um, <laughs> but uh, that will be the 25th, and so that's the rest of the month of June, right? A lot of stuff. Um, VBS is going to be every Wednesday night in July. You want to sign up for that. Uh, Heather has lots of ways that you can get involved. You don't have to be uh, on stage or teaching or any of those. There's lots of ways you can help out. So go check out the sign-ups in the foyer and figure out how you can help. Now, we're continuing our, our journey through Joshua. And uh, this week, I want to ask, what's your dream? What is your dream? If you, if you could, if you had a if you had no, money was no object, all right? Time was no object. If, if you could do something, that one thing that speaks to your heart, that, that, that you really, and maybe you never even tell anybody about, because some of us, we have dreams and we're a little bit ashamed of them, not because they're bad, but because you feel a little bit silly. You know, I'm supposed to be a grown man. And I'm not supposed to think about, you know, some of the, but there's a dream. There's something there. There's something that if, if I could do anything I wanted to do, if I could, if I could do, had unlimited time, if I had unlimited unlimited resources, if I had no responsibility and all I could do was just anything, whatever I wanted, there's a dream there. Something pops into your mind when we talk about that. You have a dream. There, there's something that comes to your head there. What is it that is, that is, that is in your head? And, and too many times we, we get these things and for some reason we, we voice them or we let them out and somebody tells you they're crazy. Somebody tells you that's never going to fly. Like uh, the, the, the young man who went to work for a newspaper. And he, he went to work for a newspaper, and they wanted him to draw political cartoons. And so he scribbled away, but his heart wasn't in it. And, and, and he, he turned in some stuff, and, and they told him, it's not any good. Your drawings are not any good. We don't want you. And they fired him because of, of lack of creativity and, and, and a lack of, of artistic talent. What happens to his dream? I mean, that's all he wanted to do was draw for a living. And so what happens to his dream? Or, or the kid that goes to try out for the basketball team, you know, and you're, you're in the... Uh, you're in, the, you're in the gym uh, at the, the, the Emsley Laney High School, right? And they're standing out. There's 15 roster spots, and, and there's a ton of kids out there. And, and there's this one 15-year-old sophomore who's 5'10", right? And, and, and everybody else that he knows is making the team, and he gets cut. His best friend, Leroy Smith makes the team. He gets cut. And so he goes home and he locks himself in his room and he cries. What happens to his dream? Because that's a crucial point right then. When, when we get told that somehow my dream is not good enough, somehow there's something wrong with my dream, somehow my dream I should put on the back burner, and, and, and then we are at a crossroads. We're at a special place. Do I let it go? Do I discount it? Do I believe what the people are saying to me? Or, or do I hang on? 
In Joshua chapter 14, we're going to read a story about a man who refused to give up on his dream. When everybody else told him it was impossible, when everyone else told him it, it, it was not going to happen, when everyone else laughed at him and, and refused to believe, and even though he was forced to put his dream on the back burner, he never gave up on his dream. He never gave up on his faith. Joshua chapter 14, we'll start at verse 6. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua and Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. Caleb then is going to go on in the next verse, in verse 7, and he's going to tell the story of how he and Joshua had been the only two of the twelve spies sent out by Moses who brought back a favorable report. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot is trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. Now, the spies come back, if you remember the story in Numbers, the spies come back, and they don't disagree on their report about the land. They say the land is amazing. It is a land flowing with milk and honey. That's just a little saying that, that you know, it's, it's, it's as great as it can possibly be. doesn't really mean there's rivers of milk. Um, it, it, it's, just, it's just as beautiful and as plentiful and as bountiful as they've been led to believe. Everything about it is amazing, and they all agree on that. They all agree that it is everything that's been promised and more. They also agree that the cities are large and well fortified. Remember, we talked a few weeks ago about Jericho being a, a technological marvel of the day because its walls were, were impenetrable, and unlike anything seen in the rest of the world. They believed that, they agreed that the people of the land were numerous and that there were indeed giants in the land. But here's the point. The point is, ten of those spies only saw danger. While two of them, Joshua and Caleb, saw opportunity. Ten of those spies looked at the same picture that Joshua and Caleb looked at. And these guys measured themselves against the task, against the giants, and they found themselves lacking. Joshua and Caleb, on the other hand, measured the task against their God. And they saw nothing that could stand against them. It's all about perspective. It's all about how I look at whatever it is that's facing me. Whatever it is that I'm up against. It, is, is, it, is it bigger than me? Probably. But is it bigger than my God? Never. In the midst of this growing pessimism, Caleb is the one who dares to disagree. He's the one who dares to go against the majority. Now, we can't overstate the bravery that this shows, the faith that this shows. When, when in Numbers it says Caleb quieted the people before Moses and shouted at them, let's go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. At that moment, even Joshua was not speaking. Caleb is the spokesman. Joshua is standing with him, but he's not speaking. Caleb is the one who is putting it out to the people. Joshua stands with him, and, and not only does their warning go unheeded, they almost get stoned to death for their troubles. So now here we are this many years later. Can you even name one of the other spies? If, if you can, you're a better scholar than me, and I'm fine with that. Or you've been playing too much Bible trivia, I don't know. But, but most of us cannot name any of the other ten spies. None of them. Most of us don't know because the point is, the people who are remembered are not the ones who blend in with the group. The people who stand out are the ones who stand up for something. The ones who blend in, the ones who go with the flow, the ones who, who maintain the status quo are rarely 
remembered. Caleb, however, had faith in the power of God. To Caleb, God was bigger than the biggest giant. Caleb was not naive about what they faced. The land was dangerous. The cities were formidable. The people were numerous. There were giants in the land. But instead of minimizing the problems, he magnified God. God was bigger than anything they faced. But the people overruled him. For 45 years, that promise that Moses made to him, that he just references, that he would inherit the land he had spied out, he held on to that. He believed that promise. He trusted that promise. And that promise, that dream, if you will, kept him going. Now, I don't know about you, but, but it's really easy for me to get discouraged when people don't catch my vision. When I try to share my dream and people don't, don't go along with it, don't get as excited about it as I am, it's real easy to get discouraged. And you hear these stories over and over again. I was in a church, and, and I, I shared with them this big vision, and, and nobody went along with me. And so what did I do? I got mad, and I left. I went somewhere else. Is that what Caleb does? No. He holds on. He maintains his faith. He maintains his focus. And he holds on to that dream. That's amazing. It's amazing that he stays. It's amazing that he continues to fight with these people. It's amazing. But he keeps a tight grip on that dream and an even tighter grip on his faith. Pick it up in verse 10. And now, here I am this day, 85 years old. As yet I'm as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just, my, just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain for which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim, that's the giants, were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. So as all the Israelites are gaining their inheritance, Caleb finally walks up to, to Joshua, and he says, you remember that place that we went? You remember that place where the giants were. You remember that place that they told us we couldn't do. Give me that mountain. I want that mountain. Because that's my dream. That's my promise. Caleb proclaims, give me that mountain. Now, it wasn't easy. Caleb still has to have the power of God to help him do this. He still has to be trusting in God that he's going to overcome all this stuff. There's a lot of obstacles in between him and the fulfillment of this dream. Just like us. If we stand up and, and whatever dream it is that God's put on our heart, if we stand up and say, give me this mountain, we have to be prepared to face some obstacles. We have to be prepared to overcome some things that are going to try to separate us from that dream. One of the first ones that Caleb has to overcome is the obstacle of friends. Now, that doesn't make any sense, right? Your friends should be helping you out. But you remember way back in Caleb's experience, he had to stand alone. Not, not be outvoted by his peers, but, but ridiculed. He had to stand against the friends that he had traveled with. Surprisingly, Friends often stand in the way of our progress. A lot of times the people who are going to drag you down the most are the ones who we call friends. Instead of building one another up, we try to keep each other down. We teach our children and our youth the value of choosing friends because as we've gotten older, we understand how valuable that is that the people who you surround yourself with are either going to build you up or tear you down. Caleb had to overcome the obstacle of his friends because w whether, whether those friends in our lives are, are family or neighbors or co-workers or whatever, there are those who will undermine God's vision in our lives. When we find ourselves listening to the voices of the cynics instead of focusing on the power of God, that's when we struggle to fulfill that dream. Second that he had to overcome was prejudice. 
specifically racial prejudice. It might surprise you to find out that Caleb was not a Jew. In the passage we just read, he was a Kenizzite. That means he was a Gentile. That may be why he was looked down on. I don't know. Maybe why his testimony wasn't as valuable as, as some of the others. But whatever it was, Caleb didn't let that deter him from following the Lord. And prejudice dies hard, if at all. There's something deeply demeaning in judging people on the basis of their ethnic background or the color of their skin. And Caleb is born a Gentile, but he becomes a child of the promise of God. According to Hebrew customs, if you joined Israel, you were adopted into one of its tribes and your name was added to the genealogy. That's important because you and I are also adopted. We are also added into the genealogy. Romans 8, Paul says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. The third obstacle he had to overcome was the obstacle of age. He admits that he's 85 years old. Now he says, my strength is still the same as it was then. And we've got some 85-year-olds in this room that would say the same thing. My strength is the same as it was then. Now here's the deal. You've heard me say this a lot, but Christianity has a great retirement plan. But it does not start till after your funeral. A lot of us, we get into our older years and we say, well, I did my time. I did my work. I did my... Unfortunately, that's not what Scripture teaches. A lot of the great leaders of God thought their lives were done. Moses thought that he was just going to be a shepherd the rest of his days, and in his 80s, God sends him back to Egypt. Nehemiah thought that he was going to live out his days as a cupbearer, living in, 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 in serving in the palace. And God sends him to build a wall. Over and over and over again, we see people who think that their life is complete when they're just getting to the place God wanted them to be all along. Age is one of those obstacles that we have to overcome. And it doesn't mean that, that you're going to do things the same way you did when you were young, but it does mean that we don't get to stop. Just because you've advanced in years is no reason to cease our commitment or our zeal for the kingdom of God. The final obstacle he has to face is the enemy itself. We need to, to realize that just because God has made a promise to Caleb does not mean that he could just sit back and wait for it to happen. Just because God had put this dream in Caleb's heart does not mean that it was just going to magically deliver itself to him. He still had to go fight for it. He still had to stand up and say, give me this mountain. This, this land of Hebron that he wants has, has not yet been conquered and is inhabited by some of the strongest people in Canaan. And Caleb requests that location. Why? Because he believes in God. Verse 12, it may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. Now that's not doubt, that's humility. Because Caleb's not saying, I'm going to go beat all these giants. He's saying, it may be that God's going to be with me. Now Joshua responds by granting Caleb his request in verse 13. Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb. Joshua remembers. I wonder if he's even embarrassed in that moment, you know? I wonder if Joshua's standing there before all of Israel and Caleb comes and says, give me this mountain. And Joshua goes, man, Caleb, I'm sorry. Of, of course. You deserve this. You, you, you deserve your inheritance. I'm, I'm sorry I forgot. You could have abandoned Israel many times, but you've held on. Verse 14 says, Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. The secret of his success over many years of service was that he wholly followed the Lord. The word wholly means wholeheartedly or with his whole heart. In fact, if you look back into Numbers, Caleb had a different spirit and followed God wholeheartedly. 
Caleb followed God with his whole heart, and he's still doing that here at the end of his life. I think that's the question we have to ask. Am I doing that? Am I following God with my whole heart, or am I separating pieces of me out? Do I have a heart for work and a heart for family, and God gets the leftovers? Am I following God with my whole heart? Because God's put that dream in your heart. God's put that vision in your mind. Whatever that is that God is calling you to, that's there because of the Holy Spirit. And what happens to that dream? That boy, locked in his room, crying because he didn't make the high school basketball team, he turned that rejection into motivation. And he worked hard. And he practiced more than everybody else. And he worked harder than everybody else. And eventually he made the team. And Michael Jordan went on to become one of the greatest basketball players to ever live. Because he never gave up on the dream. The young man at the newspaper with no ideas, who lacked creativity, went on to continue drawing. He found work here and there. Eventually his cartoons got published. And today, Walt Disney's name is synonymous with creativity and ideas because he never gave up on the dream. Caleb conquered Hebron. He took his mountain and he drove out all those giants around him because he never gave up on his dream. Caleb overcame the obstacle of friends, prejudice, age, and the enemy, not because he's some great man, but because he wholly followed the Lord. This morning, if you have a dream, a true godly vision, you got to trust in Him. If God has put that on your heart, if God has put that vision in your head, then wholly trust in the Lord. And those obstacles that hold you back, they're going to disappear, or He's going to help you overcome them. This morning, that's the call. Trust in Him. Wholly trust in the Lord. Stand boldly and proclaim Give me my mountain. We're going to sing a song right now, and there will be elders and their wives, ministers and their wives at the back of the room. They are there to pray with you and for you and over you, whatever you need. We're going to sing this song, and that's an opportunity for you to make your way back there to them. Whatever the need is, whether it's big or small, it does not matter. Maybe you're sitting there this morning going, you know what, Jeff, I don't have a dream. I don't have a dream. I, I, nothing popped into my head. Maybe that's what you need to be praying for. God, put a dream in my heart. Put a vision in my mind. How can I serve you in your kingdom? Holy trust in the Lord. That's our call this morning. Trust Him. Come now while together we stand and sing. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I'll cling, in his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best songs. Faithful, loving service to to him belongs. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Souls in danger look above. Jesus completely saves. 
He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, bellows his will obey. He your Savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. I ask you to be seated just for a moment. Um, we have a couple of things that... Uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, Brenda Beerman had asked for prayer. She has a test tomorrow that she would like for us to pray over. Steve Stone wanted to give uh, praise uh, for his dad because uh, they, he had gone to the doctor. He, we'd been praying for him, and, and they had found nothing wrong with him. Um, we also want to remember Virgil Sanderson, um, Stanley Lesker. There are a number of ours that are, are still uh, in, in need. And so... Um, we are going to say a quick prayer, and then uh, Mark Waldron, one of our shepherds, wants to share uh, uh, something with you real quick. And so let's, uh, let's bow together in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for all you bless us with and all you give us. Lord, we lift you up and glorify your name, uh, acknowledging that nothing that we have is our own. Everything comes from you. And Lord, we just praise you for your work in, uh, in the lives of those that we've been lifting up to you. We praise you for, for, for Steve's dad. We praise you for a lot of the, the, the work that we've seen you doing in, in people's lives. And Lord, we just have so many of our number who are, who are still uh, struggling, who are still uh, hurting, who are still healing. And we just ask each one of those, Lord, that, that you hear our prayers right now as, as each of us lifts up the names that are on our heart right now. Um, I, I pray that you hear these prayers, that, that you hear our prayers together in this congregation, that, that each name that is being lifted up to you right now, that you will reach into their lives, that you will work mightily, and, and that you will uh, remind us to continually glorify and praise you for all the good things in our life. Forgive us of our sins, Lord. Watch over us and protect us. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. pray that you'll indulge me just a minute, but just something that uh, Jeff talked about today just was kind of on my heart, and I just wanted to share it with you, but I, I as a few people that are still left around here, know I grew up in this church, and, uh, and having grown up in this stuff, I had dreams for it. One of them was I was part of the youth group, and at the time, we didn't have a youth minister, like we really didn't have much of a youth group. Uh, I saw Kathy here a while ago, a few others that may have grown up here with me. Um, we lost a lot of our kids because we didn't have a youth group. We, our parents did our best they could to, to help us and do things, but lost a lot of my friends who quit following Jesus. And so I had a dream that one day we would have a youth group. One day we'd have a youth minister. And so when I came back, came back to Huntsville uh, before we had children, there was a guy here that kind of had the same dream, and he and I got together. We started the first youth group, and he eventually became a minister someplace else, and I continued it until finally I went to the elders and said, we've got too many kids. We need a youth minister, and we got a youth minister, and that was, the, you know, that was part of my dream. <clears throat> when I became an elder a long time ago, 25, I don't know, something years ago, I had a dream for this church. One of them was this building. That was a dream for me. And I remember when we got together, I remember Stan Foley and I kind of, my dad was kind of the face of it. Stan Foley and I did a lot of the work as far as organizing it and helping to raise the money for it and having the meetings at people's houses and stuff. And I looked at it and I said, you know, I wonder if God didn't help me do all the things I'd done in my life for this moment to be able to help lead this. And then I remember um, as I became an elder, one of my dreams was that this church would be known for something else other than what we didn't do. The only people who thought they were going to hate heaven, people who didn't love anybody, the people who you know, kept everybody else out. 
and said, if you know, if nobody else could go to heaven and all those things. And I had a dream that someday we would welcome anybody. And anybody that came in, I didn't care what their nationality was, what color their skin was, what language they spoke, um, where, where they grew up, uh, that we would be the kind of people that would love people. That people came in no matter where they came from and that they could be a part of this church. Uh, and that we become known for something for what we did and not what we didn't do. And I just want to tell you how proud I am of this church. Because that was my dream for this place. And we're not there yet. We're still working through all those things. But we, when I look back to where we were when I started as a kid and where we are to now, uh, I, for me, have at least seen part of my dream come through. So anyway, I appreciate you giving me a couple of minutes, but I just couldn't help but kind of share that. I, I thought about that because... Having grown up in this church, you know, I, I stand here and look at the, the stained glass that's in memory of my mom. You know, it's just this, my dad was an elder here. This is just my, my family and my church. And I just want to share you, dreams are important. And all of you should have dreams like that. And I appreciate all y'all helping us make at least some of my dreams come true. I appreciate it very much. Thanks for you a few minutes. We're going to stand and sing one more song as we close. A Common Love. And if the Spirit so moves you, why don't you just take the hand of the man, woman, child next to you as we sing this song together. A common love for each other, a common gift to the Savior, a common bond holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we're weary, a common hope for tomorrow, a common joy in the truth of God's word. Again. A common love for each other, a common gift to the Savior, a common bond holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we're weary, a common hope for tomorrow, a common joy in the truth of God's bow as we're dismissed this, af this afternoon. Our loving, wonderful creator, we are so thankful, Lord, for this uh, time that we've had to be together to worship you. And uh, as we leave here, Lord, uh, may you give people like, like me who are distracted too easily. May you give me the, the message from the Holy Spirit every day. Would you please ask him to zap me when I get too distracted to remember that I need to be talking to you? And would you allow me, Lord, then to do that, to just stop what I'm doing and, and say hello to you, Lord, and tell you what's going on in my life and and how much I love you and how much I cherish you. I pray, Lord, that we can do this every day during this coming week, and it'll help us to have the feel of this service today where we worship you and, and love and joy. And uh, as we leave here, we have this wonderful feeling, and I like to carry that throughout the week. So, Lord, uh, we're so thankful for, for you and for what you've done for us through your son, Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen.